at seven March board of directors meeting. And that's, I see we have some phone numbers at the bottom. Is Stephanie with us? I'm here, I'm called in. Okay, so it looks like we have uh, all the directors. Uh, we've got our legal counsel on the line. Brian, would you like to go over our instructions before we get going with the meeting? Yes, sir. Um, so we have started the recording. So welcome everybody to the Montgomery County Mud number seven board of directors meeting for Tuesday, March the 16th, 2021. I appreciate everyone being able to attend the meeting remotely today. Uh, as in prior meetings, I'll briefly go through the meeting procedures for our remote meeting, and then we'll conduct a roll call. So to begin with, I need to remind everyone the meeting is being recorded as required by the Texas Open Meetings Act. Second, please remember to state your name before you speak, include the making of any motions. When you're not speaking, please be sure to mute your line. Third, we'll continue the practice of having a roll call to vote on each motion. After a motion has been made and seconded, please wait until you hear your name called and then respond with a verbal aye a nay or an abstention. Finally, we need to identify each person who's joining the meeting remotely today so we can accurately reflect the attendance and the minutes of the meeting. I'll perform a roll call for the board members followed by staff and consultants. When you hear your name or your company called, please respond by indicating that you're present in the meeting. Likewise, if you need to leave the meeting before it adjourns, please announce that you're doing so before you disconnect. Once I've completed the roll call for directors, staff, and consultants, I ask for any members of the public to identify themselves for the record. So starting with our board of directors, Kyle Mays. Here. Paul Nelson. <clears throat> Is Paul in the meeting? You hear me? Yep, I heard you that time, Paul, thank you. Hey, thanks. Henry, Henry Cheek. Here. Don Sarich. Here. Stephanie Zertucci. Present. Okay, that'll complete the roll call for our directors. We'll move on to Woodlands Water staff. Jim Stinson. Present. Mike Mooney. Thank you. Present. Maureen Bouchois. Present. Jeannie Scott. Present. Shelly Lawson Kennedy. Present. Anyone else from Woodlands Water in the meeting? If not, we'll move on to San Jacinto River Authority staff. Ron Kelly. Present. Chris Mead. <clears throat> Present. Matt Corley. Present. Aaron Schindelwolf. Present. Anyone else from the River Authority in the meeting? If not, we'll move on to MUD7 consultants. Do we have any MUD7 consultants in the meeting? If not, uh, members of the public, do we have any members of the public present in the meeting? We need to identify you for the record as well. Yeah, this is Paul Brown. Um, I'm a resident of the Woodlands as well as a MUD director of, of uh, 47. Arthur Bredehoff, resident of Woodlands. Okay, this is Brian. Do we have any other members of the public? Like if not, it. Maureen, does that cover everyone? Yep, there's nobody else that hasn't identified themselves. All right, that will complete the roll call. Kyle, I hand it over to you to uh, go ahead and get started on the agenda. Thank you. All right, well, um, we've got a solid agenda here. Um, call a meeting to order. And um, that moves us to item two, comments from the public. Paul or Arthur, are you just here to see what a really good mud meeting looks like or did you wanna to talk to us a little bit? Well, that was one of the reasons. We also wanted to look at the ocean behind you. <laughs> but uh, I could probably start off. Um, I wanted to come today to talk to, and I appreciate you guys being receptive. Um, I want to come and talk to the changing community we have. You know, we have a community that's built out and uh, obviously um, is moving into and has moved into probably a replacement community, a transition community in terms of uh, infrastructure, right? 
Uh, San Jacinto says we got about a uh, billion dollars worth of infrastructure above and below ground. And, um, you know, obviously that over time is going to need to be replaced and some of it's being replaced now. Um, what I wanted to talk to is how we handle this uh, transition uh, from the standpoint of uh, the MUDs and very specifically uh, uh, budgeting and uh, planning. Um, you know, I really think that we should consider uh, number one, creating a, uh, a rolling plan inside a process with committed funding outside of the current budget process and multi-year funding, not year-to-year -year funding, okay? That's item number one. Um, as far as paying or funding goes, you know, how is this going to be done? And frankly, it's gonna be done with charges one way or the other to our customers, right? And the odds are those charges are gonna, or well, the, the uh, work we have to do and the money we have to spend is gonna result in increases in what customers pay every month, right? Um, and uh, it seems to me that number one, right now I have, I know what we're going to spend. We're going to spend eight hundred million dollars over the next ten years. I have no idea what that means because it's just not out there. What that means to our customers in in a rate yearly over the initial ten years, okay? And that only includes what we have out there. There are things that are not in this uh, in this plan right now that I presume you guys have all seen. Um, and what, I, what I'd like to suggest is that considering the fact that probably the infrastructure cost is going to outrun the, uh, you know, the month-to-month -month cost of, uh, of uh, you know, of the mud vis-a-vis uh, -vis the customer's bill, uh, I think that we should really consider isolating the, the dollars that go to infrastructure and bill that as a separate, consider billing that as a separate item on their bill um, so that they understand where these, these increases are coming from. And they also, it also get from a marketing standpoint, certainly gives them a insight, we'll give them an insight into, um, you know, what we're doing for them in terms of, in the community, in terms of uh, the, uh, the transition that we're, we're gonna uh, experience an infrastructure. Um, hey Paul, real quick, let's, let me interject. We, we like to kind of keep along with the same guidelines that the trustees use and keep comments to about three minutes each. So if you would try to. Okay, well, I'm, um, I'm basically done. I tried to get it down to three minutes. If I'm over, I'm sorry. Um, you know, the only other thing I, I, I wonder about, frankly, is, you know, how we socialize these kinds of discussions, issues to all MUD directors. And, uh, you know, I think we should certainly consider perhaps periodic meetings with all our MUD directors to talk about not just this kind of an issue, but other issues. That's it. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, Paul. The big takeaway I get from that is um, you'd like to see infrastructure costs, you know, rebuilding, reconstruction, repair, maintenance, whatever, uh, kind of in a separate line item where people could see where their monthly billing dollars are going. Is that kind of uh, what you're saying? Well, I think it's it's primarily the infrastructure costs, the extraordinary infrastructure costs, not the day-to-day, right. -day, month to month uh, expenses. Gotcha. gotcha. Thank you very much for your comments. Anybody else? Um, Mr. President, uh, Arthur Bredoff, I'm here uh, for two reasons. One, to make some public comments on uh, groundwater surface water uh, budget mix, and also to learn uh, from a good mud. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. <laughs> Excellent. You got three minutes. Let's I'm going to do the best I can in three minutes. You cut me off if I'm not finished. Um, <clears throat> I call option B, groundwater surface water budget uh, ratios. And uh, I would refer everybody and trust they have it to the strategic well level report that San Jacinto provided in December 2020 at the Woodlands Water Agency meeting uh, that covers the period of 2010 to uh, 2020. 
Uh, prior to going to uh, surface water, the uh, chart continues to show that aquifers were being depleted and subsidence was uh, uh, continuing. When we started in 2016 at a 65% uh, surface water, we started to see things stabilize and the aquifers rebuild. Even in 2018, when we dropped to 50%, uh, there was some drop in the aquifers, but they stabilized. In 2019, when we went to 35% uh, surface water, we see, we see the further decline of the aquifers and subsidence. In your packet, there's a memo that you guys will be getting a report from both Jim Stenson and Ron Kelling dated May 13th, 2020. And your president Kyle Mays is very familiar with this because he was on our subcommittee that studied groundwater surface water that made a presentation to the trustees. And one of the recommendations was each year during a budget cycle, and you're in your budget cycle now for fiscal year 22, was to look at our goal to go to 50-50, 50% 50 -50, groundwater, 50% surface water. And Ron Kelling will go through his uh, presentation, but Ron did a calculation based upon fiscal year 21, what the impact would be to the average customer that uses 10,000 gallons a month. And it would be an additional charge of $2.31, bringing their average bill to $31 versus 28 today. To continue to invest in aquifer recharge and, and uh, prevent subsidence, an investment has to be made both by the customer. And this is one area where Woodlands Muds and WWA along with SJR can make a real impact to not only today's environment, but our future conditions in Woodlands. Thank you for your time and I appreciate your service. Perfect. Thank you I very hope much. I met the three minutes. <laughs> right on time. Well done, sir. All right. That's, we only have two members of the public and they both speak. So uh, thank you, gentlemen. We will move on to item three consider an act on request for adjustments to your relief from specific charges. Jeannie, that's. Uh, this is Jeannie. I don't have stuff? any. Anybody else? Mike? This is Mike. No, I have nothing this month either. All right. So the next few items, uh, four through eight, are part of our consent agenda. They are in uh, pages one through 18 in the packet. Does anybody have any questions about the financial reports, corrections to the minutes, tax collector reports? Uh, attendance and expenses for Woodlands Water Trustee business or SJRA, kind of the standard monthly report. Any questions on any of those things? Okay, anybody like to uh, make a motion that we approve the consent agenda? This is Stephanie, so moved. Thank you. Nelson, second. Paul Nelson's a second. This is Kyle Mays. I vote aye. Paul, how do you vote? I vote aye. Mr. Serich, how do you vote? Uh, can I abstain on the minutes since I wasn't present? Yes. Mr. Cheek, okay. how do you vote? Aye. And Stephanie, how do you vote? Aye. All righty. Thank you very much. Brings us to item nine, attorney's report. <laughs> Counselor? Yes, sir, this is Brian. Um, a couple items under the attorney's report. One, um, as I'm sure all of you know, the governor did lift the mandatory mask restrictions and the uh, business restrictions that were put in place over the summer on um, March the 10th, last Wednesday. Uh, some questions came up as to whether or not uh, those um, those actions by the governor last week impacted the disaster proclamation that he issued uh, last year around this time that suspended the in-person meeting requirements under the Texas Open Meetings Act. Uh, we have been in contact with the governor's office and have confirmed with them that uh, the actions taken last week do not impact in any way that disaster proclamation so we remain uh, status quo in the remote meeting environment for uh, the time being. A um, few boards have asked about when we anticipate um, 
meetings being in person, and I think Jim's going to touch on that under his uh, general manager's report. But from a legal perspective, those um, uh, suspensions of the Open Meetings Act requirements remain in place. Other item I have to cover is you should have received an email yesterday from Shelley that had um, clean and redline versions of a uh, update to the construction 10 or con 10 policy for developer reimbursed um, infrastructure projects. Um, been some discussion over the last couple of months about dusting that policy off and seeing if any updates were necessary since it was last updated in 1995. Don't have many districts left in the woodlands that have uh, construction projects that will involve public infrastructure fronted uh, costs fronted by the developer to be reimbursed in the future through a bond issue or uh, operating funds of a district. Uh, but we are presenting this to all boards since uh, the policy is a uniform policy. Not asking for action by the board today. Uh, this is just for review and discussion if necessary. Next month, we will have an item on the agenda to consider action on the revision to the policy. Not much in the way of substantive revisions. Primarily, I was looking to um, have more references to the applicable statutes, whether it be the administrative code or the water code, where the old version of the policy basically regurgitated a lot of the statutory language, which of course can change from time to time when the legislature meets. I wanted to tie those references directly to the statutes so that if the legislature does uh, modify the statutes in the future, our policy will automatically uh, change with the change in the statutory language as opposed to us having to go and uh, do a, a new amendment for the, um, uh, for the legislative change. But those, all the proposed changes are redlined uh, in that one PDF document. Um, if you have questions, uh, happy to answer them. And again, this isn't for action for today, just for discussion, and then we can uh, consider action or further discussion next month. And that's all I have under the attorney's report. Jim's gonna cover the, uh, the contractor issues with Tackett's breaking water lines uh, under his general manager's report. Okay, does anybody have questions for Brian on the CON 10 agreement? Some really exciting yeah. legal documentation language. It was very exciting. I, I had just a question to help me with uh, the part of where we're moving from five years to 15 years. I'm uh, trying to understand exactly what the obligation of the MUD is in that 15 year and why it was needed to change it from five to 15. Is it just to keep it intact? in case it takes that long to accomplish all that? Yeah, this is Brian. I, frankly, I don't know where the five-year time period comes comes from because for years and years, all of our uh, reimbursement agreements for other districts have been uh, on a 15-year period and renewed after that. Five, perhaps it was because back when the Woodlands was first developing, maybe that things were moving so quickly that a five-year period was a reasonable time period for uh, infrastructure projects to be constructed and for bonds to be issued and reimbursements to happen. But um, generally it's longer than that. So our standard time period for our reimbursement agreements are 15 years. So I just updated that time frame. Okay. Yeah, thank you. That's all I had. <clears throat> Any other questions for Brian? All right, let's uh, go to item 10, consider an act on modifying how the maximum sewer volume is calculated for water bills issued from Feb 21 to Feb 22. Is that a Ron Kelling? Jim Stinson. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this relates to, um, during, we were reading meters for our February water bills uh, right when the freeze occurred. We know the freeze caused a number of homes to have broken pipes and leaky uh, plumbing and used more water than they typically would <clears throat> during a February period. Our maximum summer sewer volume is calculated every year in February based on water used or water metered at the home for December, January, and February. 
So I made a call to not include the February meter readings in the calculation and create a maximum sewer volume bill that essentially was the same as the February 2020 calculation. Uh, we are recommending that we carry forward that number, that maximum sewer volume throughout this year. We think it would be unfair to calculate that uh, maximum sewer volume with the February numbers in there for many homeowners. And it virtually has a minimal, if any, impact on your budget because, as you know, the San, we send the San Jacinto River Authority our meter readings, and then they in turn bill us for whatever we send them. So uh, it's absolutely or minimally no impact on your budget. Most homes don't vary that much from year to year in their sewer, maximum sewer volume number. So uh, just to be fair to the customer and, and, and streamline this process, we're recommending for this year, we use the February 2020 uh, maximum sewer volume uh, for each household and then recalculate it next year. All right, that makes sense to me. Any questions for Jim on, on how that calculation is gonna work and why the change? Seems like the fair thing to do. Can I, anybody like to make a motion that we, um, uh, let's see, allow yeah. Jim to modify the calculation for sewer volume as discussed, basically throwing out the Feb 22 as an aberration. The February 2021, yeah. Use the February Sorry, 20 yeah. for this year and recalculate in February 2022. I, uh, I uh, find it to be a very equitable solution and I appreciate it. And I, I'll make a motion that we move forward with that, Mr. Stinson's proposal. Thank you, Paul. We have a motion, we have a second. I'll take a Henry Cheek seconded. This is Kyle Mays. I vote aye. Paul, how do you vote? Vote aye. Don, how do you vote? Aye. Henry, how do you vote? Aye. And Stephanie, how do you vote? Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Move to item 11 for information on SGRA phase two Spring Creek flood control dam feasibility study. Ron, you want to intro and I'll finish up? Sure. Um, I was just looking. Um, didn't we skip the. Oh, that's. No, I'm sorry. Next. The, the flood control. Um, the ILAs are, have made the rounds, uh, been reviewed. Um, we anticipate taking the ILAs with each MUD to our board in April, and then uh, bring them for final approval by the MUDs either in April or May. And um, I don't know if, if Jim or uh, Brian has any other comments on the agreements themselves. I, I do not, I think it's, uh template that was used at least once before. I'm trying to remember, is this the third bite of this or once or twice anyway. Right. Um, and uh, in your packet on page 20 is a very uh, lengthy and, and maybe somewhat complicated uh, calculation on what each MUD's proportion will be. I think it's, we're given in a range depending on what kind of uh, match the San Jacinto River Authority is able to put into the equation uh, for MUD 7. Um, I guess it would be your, the best uh, scenario would be about 22,500 and the worst case would be about 29,000. So uh, we have the city of Humble throwing in $50,000. So that's a new uh, partner in this effort. And uh, we, we feel like it's a worthwhile effort to continue to look at this detention upstream and a lot of people are counting on this. Okay, 
Okay, so MUD 7 would be responsible for 20 something thousand, 25,000 plus or minus. Looks that like is correct. The yeah. Calculations. Okay, any questions for Jim and Ron on this feasibility study grant application? And, and this is information only. I think we've already received our authorization to move forward with it. So this is just kind of giving you the latest uh, information we have. Okay, that takes us to item 12, receive information from SJRE staff regarding review of groundwater surface water delivery ratio for FY 2022. And uh, this subject is along the lines of what our guest speaker, Arthur Bredehoff, uh, brought to our attention. Correct. Uh, so, this is Ron Kelly, SJRA. As Arthur mentioned, uh, the Groundwater Surface Water Committee uh, met last year. They wrote a memo of dated May of last year. <laughs> and in that, <laughs> it discusses the need to review the ratio of groundwater to surface water on an annual basis. <clears throat> and also, as author uh, mentioned to you, uh, if you recall back in the uh, last December, the presentation regarding how aquifer levels dropped, uh, were dropping. And then when we got to deliver surface water at 65%, 50%, it, it leveled off. Now that we're at 35% surface water, it's starting to drift a little bit downward. And the same thing can be said for subsidence kind of con uh, concurs uh, with that. So what we've provided to you is uh, in your packet and it's on page 22 of your packet is a very simple calculation using fiscal year 21 um, budget and rates because we are working right now on the 22 rates. And it shows that if you recall the um, Woodlands charges their customers a $2.88 blended rate um, um, for their water uh, at using a 35% surface water, 65% groundwater rate. For the average residential customer that has about 10,000 gallons of use, that's about $28.80 uh, $28 a month that they pay for this um, pass through for uh, the blended rate. If we were to increase the Woodlands blend up to 50%, we would not increase, we can't just increase your, your, uh, your take because that would increase everybody's in the entire GRP, their rate. So we just take that cost of increasing the cost of 2.5 MGD of surface water to the Woodlands to get you to a 50% uh, blend, that changes then the, and that would, you would end up paying for the, the power, uh, the cost of the water and basically chemicals. Um, that would increase your blended water rate so that the average residential customer with 10,000 gallons would pay about $31.10 a month. And so the difference is, as Arthur had mentioned, is about $2.30. Now that's based on 21 rates. I don't, we don't know what the 22 rates are gonna be, but it's gonna be that same general uh, order of magnitude. Um, so what we're asking for is some guidance from the trustees in April on which way they'd like to go. This is not a, a c commitment to doing, to uh, taking a certain amount of water it's just that we need to, since we're working on the budgets now and work on the rates, we kind of need to know if the Woodlands is interested in this. If so, we would go through the process to calculate what that rate would be using the 22, um, the FY22 budget. And then we would come back probably in uh, the summer and give you what those actual rates are so that we can include that in our Woodlands division uh, budget. Uh, which is a little bit later in the springtime. We anticipate going to the GRP for their, um, introduce their budget in April and get a vote on it by the GRP in May. So then we would know what the rates are, then we would know what the budget is, and then we could calculate what this is. So this is not a 
this is not a commitment to doing this, just try seeking guidance of whether or not the Woodlands is interested in this or not. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. I think the question um, for directors is, do you feel like there's gonna be any heartburn if people pay an extra two or three dollars on their monthly bill so that we don't pop, pump the aquifers dry or you know drop the levels of the aquifers significantly and uh, so that we don't uh, you know pump the degree that we cause more subsidence. The other thought is if we say, well, no, we want to keep our cost down by $2 a month and we want to pump more out of the ground, we're going to lose credibility with our neighbors who also want to pump a lot of water out of the ground. And so uh, I think that needs to be part of the thought process. Definitely. by well, Director Nelson, I mean, I, obviously, I think the $2 would be well worth it. And I will do all I can to encourage everybody I know and pays the Woodlands bill to be uh, more than happy to do that, especially until we get changes at the uh, regulatory agencies involved, et cetera. But I think it's well worth it. And we need to, to uh, carefully sell it to our customers that uh, I think we're catching on. This is it's not a joke and not something we can put off. So I would certainly support that effort. Any other comments? I'm curious what the plant production rate would be. Um, 14 and a half. Right now, it's planning on 12. We would add two and a half, so we'd go to 14 and a half. Okay. And, and, and who, the other participants, what is their blending ratio? They would stay at 35%. Well, we would offer to anybody receiving surface water if they want to increase their allocation from 35% surface water to 50% surface water. I don't know if anybody else is gonna take us up on that deal, they may. Um, but to answer your question, Don, and everybody else would be at 35% surface water and the Woodlands would be at 50%. So if, if they did do that, Ron, then the, the, um, the O&M cost could increase more because of the GAC change outs, right? Yes, yes. As you as you know, it's going to be highly dependent on on GAC change outs. Yes, right. Uh, and so, yes. So that's why we kind of need to know who all's in. Uh, it would be interested because it's a big difference between if you're pumping an extra two and a half MGD or three point two MGD because I got another GAC change out which costs six hundred thousand dollars. I'm all for saving the groundwater. I'm, you know, I, I've always have been. My my concern is that the other participants aren't equally as concerned. And I'm not sure we are where we are at the lawsuits, but it'd be nice if everybody was on board with this. I guess I guess a a, a simple answer to that, Don, where we're at in the lawsuits, three to five years, if not more. Uh, away from getting those resolved. And, and that would include also the whole DFC issue, groundwater management, Lone Star. I think all that is three to five years minimum away. And I just have a problem with Woodland footing the bill. That's it's understandable. Well, you can think of it as we're footing our bill and eventually they're going to get their own bill, hopefully when they lose that lawsuit, meaning Conroe yeah. and Magnolia and whoever. Hopefully, we'll see what the terms are when it gets settled. And and, and uh, Mr. Sarich, I would also add that, well, one is I think it's, uh, it's easy for me to say that it's worth it, but I, I do think that we need to stand up. We've been saying that this is a bad policy to pump any more than that we're doing. And uh, if we just give up and say, let's leave it alone and we'll subside with the rest of them. And secondly, I think that what we've also learned is if they want to continue, uh, anybody that doesn't try to increase their fold, they're going to end up 
you know, like we've always said, having to pump a little deeper and a little harder, and they're going to have their own maintenance issues, as well as electricity issues, et cetera. So I think I, I, I have a lot of experience there, Paul. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ruth. Doc, are you? Mr. Serge, where do you go? All right, well, thank you. You know, the, uh, the calculations are on page 22 and uh, we, we will have to, I'm assuming the trustees next month will have to take some sort of a vote to tell SGRA whether to proceed with 50-50 or 65-35, is that right? Yes. Jim or Ron, okay. Yeah. So um, obviously we're all concerned about everybody paying their fair share. Does anybody have any heartburn with us um, sticking to the 50-50 blend, um, even if it means costing us a couple of dollars a month each on average? All right, uh, very good. No, no vote required here. Uh, let's see. So that takes us to item 13, general manager's report. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I'm going to highlight a number of items from the trustee meeting. First of all, we had a lengthy discussion uh, regarding the feasibility study for consolidating wastewater treatment plants in the woodlands. Um, I think the trustees uh, sent a message they wanted more information on what the public engagement, a stakeholder outreach would look like. <clears throat> so Ron and his team will be working on that. We also got a, a message that they would like for us to inform the Woodlands Township of this potential study and uh, get some feed, excuse me, feedback from their leadership. We do have a meeting, I think it's close to being set with uh, several township directors and their upper management to talk about this and we'll be bringing the topic back to the trustees at the April meeting. Um, the San Jacinto River Authority presented their current 10-year plan. Uh, just as a reminder, the 10-year plan is a, is a rolling snapshot every year looking 10 years out. Um, our committee, our um, ad hoc committee, budget committee, audit committee uh, is going to need to, to revisit this topic in the next couple of months to look at funding options that uh, they might recommend to the trustees and the MUDs for this roughly $180 to $200 million that is looking at needing to be invested in the infrastructure over the next 10 years. Um, I did report that the Montgomery Central Appraisal District is soliciting candidates for special purpose district uh, or soliciting special purpose district candidates for the MCAT election that will occur uh, next uh, later this year. Um, you may recall that the last couple of election cycles, the Woodlands Township has uh, been able to uh, place their candidate in that seat. They simply have enough uh, appraised value and garners them enough votes to somewhat control that position. But if anybody's interested in putting their name in the hat for a special purpose district candidate on the MCAD board, let us know. Um, we did have a request to consider bringing our MUD meetings back in person. Um, I am recommending that we hold off on that for another month or so, I don't think we have uh, total consensus and unanimous agreement to do that between all of the MUD directors. And I think that it's important once we begin meeting in person again, that we have support for each of the MUD districts to do that. Um, also, MCAD uh, put out a press release that uh, you Homes and businesses that were damaged during the freeze are eligible for a temporary disaster uh, relief on their appraised value. So we, we may see some of that coming our way. I think uh, that was uh, 
We saw some of that in Harvey, so we may see some again for the freeze. Uh, we had a request from a MUD director to uh, have a tour of the San Jacinto River Authority SCADA room, and uh, we're offering that to all MUD directors. So Shelly will be sending out uh, an invite uh, in the next week or so to, to look at a time and a date for uh, a tour of the SJRA SCADA system room. Uh, Lone Star Groundwater District has reached out to meet with a few of our elected officials. President Eric Hurd has selected four uh, individuals that will be meeting with Lone Star to see what uh, information they wanna convey and, and what would be somewhat of an informal sit down face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, we'll have Eric Hurd uh, Laura Norton, Neil Gaynor, and John Yours attending that. I, I will also be attending. So more, more to come on that meeting. I still am working with two neighborhoods on the AMI pole installations that were installed on San Jacinto River Authority property. One is near the intersection of Lake Woodlands and Woodlands Parkway on uh, Waterwell site. And the other is uh, slash pine water plant one uh, site. So uh, I, uh, they're, they're pushing for complete relocation of those poles. I haven't completed an analysis if that is feasible or possible, but uh, hope to, to have more information on that at the next meeting. I did uh, have some information on painting the poles, replacing the poles with a camouflage type tree structure and that information is in your packet, but I'll, again, my analysis is really not complete at this point. Um, the Tacus company is installing fiber around, a high, a high speed fiber option around the woodlands, creating uh, a lot of problems for our field staff and our customers. Um, we've had over a hundred water main breaks since January 1 to the tune of well over $100,000 in repairs. Um, we had a meeting with them, Mike Mooney and I did one-on-one -on -one a couple of weeks ago. I attended another meeting uh, at the request of Commissioner Nowak on Monday. And then we have an, um, yet another meeting just with Takas and our staff for Thursday to see if we can uh, come up with a workable path forward. Um, we have also consulted with a local attorney to, to guide us if uh, negotiations don't work out. The Woodlands Water Board of Trustees voted to do a refunding to our MUDs based on a resolution back, back a number of years ago. In your packet is the breakdown on what each MUD can expect from that, uh, essentially ec what we call excess reserves from the Woodlands Water Agency reserve account. The, the HARC monthly report is in your packet if you have any questions. And also a number of compliment emails from residents uh, regarding our staff uh, in particular during the freeze. I just would report that that was very, very difficult for our staff, especially our field crews. Uh, but we have that behind us. And now TACUS is our big challenge today. So that concludes my report. Thank you, Jim. Uh, we'll move on to item 14, Woodlands Water Trustees Report. I would just add on a couple things um, to what Jim was saying about the trustee meeting. Uh, we did pass or agree to a, um, a standard on if trustees approve something, the cost comes in higher than what the trustees originally expected to be approved. I think, Jim, that if it goes over by more than 35%, we have to re-vote. Is that right? Is that the standard? Um, I think we zeroed in on 30. It's in okay. your packet. 30 for either time or schedule or dollars. Mm -hmm. And this came in because we had a, uh, we voted on a, a hiring a consultant to um, uh, look at the cost for replacing some equipment. And instead of 100,000, it was 150,000 or something along those lines. And so anyway, we decided we needed to set some sort of limit to where if it exceeded a, a given percentage, then we needed to just let everybody know the new information before, uh, and so we could vote again. Um, 
The other thing is, as a member of the Finance and Audit Committee, I spent multiple hours with San Jacinto River Authority and Woodlands Water Agency staff talking about the uh, possibility of consolidating uh, wastewater treatment plant one and two um, near the current site of plant two. Talked about the cost of that versus refurbishing plant one in place and um, the Finance and Audit Committee decided, you know, that because we're literally talking about hundreds of millions of dollars in expense, that spending 500000 or a million or what, something in that ballpark for a consultant to do a feasibility study on, to give us more accurate information to make our decision on whether to consolidate or just throw that idea out or you know, essentially to give us a more detailed understanding of what our options are and what the cost would be. Anyway, it's such a big ticket item uh, all the way around. The, uh, the trustees decided that they wanted to uh, get more information, get more people involved, you know, like the uh, um, you know, uh, uh, other uh, stakeholders in the community and so so that process is, is at least going to get pushed out a month or two before we even decide whether to hire a consultant. Because, um, I mean, it, it was just the mandate or the potential mandate was a little too broad to go out for an RFQ. Jim, did you want to add anything to that comment or discussion? Uh, no, I, I, I did see it that regarding the standards for revisiting projects, the 30% is the threshold for either cost or scheduling. All right, any questions for Jim or me about the trustee meeting? Now let's move to item 15. Uh, does anyone have matters for placement on future agenda? Going once, going twice. All right, thank you everybody. Uh, that concludes the meeting and so we are adjourned. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thanks Kyle. All right, take care.